All right, so let's start uh, putting our puzzle pieces together. What I'm going to do is come up to new. And again, I've got Inventor open already. And normally we've been clicking on standard IPT. Today, what we're going to do is click on standard IAM. So this is an assembly. What an assembly is, is basically multiple parts that are put together. So I'm going to click on assembly, standard IAM, and then I'm going to click create. Once your screen loads, you're going to see this space right here. This is where we're going to put all of our parts and uh, essentially put them together. Up at the top here, I'm going to click on place. And I want to make sure I'm clicking on place by itself. I do not want to use any of these other ones. So I click on place. And then for me, you can see that my folder is already shown with all of my puzzle parts. But for you guys, if you don't see it, you know, again, come up here. Go to your desktop and then find your folder just like you normally would. So I've got my 3D cube. And then I'm just going to start by picking a part. And as I pick on it, you can see which part it is. So I'm going to place my plus piece um, first. I'm going to click open. And you can see that here's my puzzle part. Once I left click, puzzle part is placed. An inventor actually allows me to place multiple parts. Uh, since I only need one of those, I'm just going to put that one down. And then I'm going to press escape on the keyboard to finish this up. So I've got my first piece in place. I can move it around. I'm going to place my second one as well. So again, click place. Find the next part that you want to put down. And we're going to use this one right here. So I press open. And I put my part in place. All right, so now let's say I want to take this piece and attach it to this one. And I want this piece, like this portion right here, to be fitting into this spot. What I'm going to do first, before I start to constrain everything, is I'm going to use this tool, which is called Free Rotate. So I'm going to click on Free Rotate. And then I'm going to click on the piece that I actually want to move. I like to get my piece into position before I actually attach it. So I click on it. And you'll see that there are a couple different points that you can click and grab from. So if I click over here, for example, I can rotate the piece in this direction horizontally. I can rotate it vertically. And then I can also kind of rotate it around this way. So you're going to have to take, take a little bit of time and rotate it into a position that looks like where you want to put it. So once I do that, now I've got this kind of standing upright. I'm going to hit escape to finish that. And this is about where I want it. All right, the next thing you're going to have to get in the habit of doing is rotating all of your pieces together. So, so to do that, you'll see that I hold down shift on the keyboard, and then I'm holding down the wheel of the mouse. So I want that to be sitting right in that little spot over there. So I've got that in a good position. Next thing I'm going to do is come up to where it says constrain. And I'm going to click on this. And there's two different constraints that we're going to use. The first one is mate. The second one is flush. And you're going to use a combination of these for all of your puzzle pieces. So I'm going to start by clicking on mate. And once I do that, Inventor is going to basically ask me, and it's what it wants me to do, is to click on the two surfaces that I want to stick together or that I want to touch. So this is going to be one. So I'm going to click on that one because when I put this together, I know that that surface is going to touch that surface. So I click on those two. And after I do that, you can see my puzzle piece moved. I got to make sure I click apply before I move on to my next constraint. So I press apply. And then that one is totally done. Now you'll notice if I close out of this, I can still move this puzzle piece. So that means we're not finished yet. When I'm all done, both of these puzzle pieces will be stuck together. So I'm going to click on constraint again. And this time, I'm going to use mate still, but I'm going to mate an edge. So what I can do, instead of clicking on a flat surface, I can find the edge by itself. So I'm going to click on this edge. And I want it to stick to this edge right over here. So you can see if I zoom in a little bit, that's the actual edge of the plus side piece. And I'm going to attach that to the edge of this piece over here. So I click on those two, and I hit apply. 
If I close out now, you can see that my puzzle piece is a little more constrained. So they're starting to move together, but again, this still moves up and down. So my last thing, if we look from this angle over here, you can see that this surface is not even with this one. And if this was totally put together, those two surfaces would be even. So what I can do now is go back to constrain. And this time I'm gonna use flush. And what flush does, if you see the two little surfaces with the arrows, it makes two surfaces even with each other. So I click on this one, I'm gonna click on my first surface, and then I'm gonna click on my second one. And then after I'm done, I always hit apply. And now what you'll see if I zoom out and I rotate this around a little bit, these two puzzle pieces are completely attached. And this is what we want. This would be considered fully constrained. Once I do that, my next step would be to place my second or my third piece, I should say, um, down into my screen here and attach that to the previous two puzzle pieces that I have. And once you're done, eventually you'll have all six puzzle pieces complete and you'll have a fully constrained puzzle cube.